This project here is an interesting one. This is a RC car that I retrofit from an old RC platform to the new frequency hop spe spread spectrum ones at 2.4 gigahertz. So I totally refit it. So we come in battery power, some power supplies, things like that. And we power the radio receiver. Now, this is the transmitter. It's a normal one we use for for driving RC cars and everything. It puts out supposedly a pulse with modulated signal for servos. It's about 50 hertz and the minimum pulse width is for minus 90 degrees on a servo which is one millisecond 5% duty. The center is for zero stop position is 1.5 milliseconds per every 20 milliseconds and full 90 degrees is 2 milliseconds of a 20 millisecond period so that's 10 percent duty cycle of a 50 hertz signal so to move forward with it the project brings in a Raspberry Pi Pico that reads those pulse with modulated signals for the throttle. And it has a little step down resistor bridge here because that receiver is working at 5 volts. Pico is working at 3. So it brings into that pulse train, converts that pulse train to a different type of pulse width signal. This pulse width signal is programmed in software. The software is set up for 2 kilohertz and it, it has a duty cycle anywhere from zero percent duty which is zero milliseconds to a hundred percent duty which is the pulse width is full on all the time and it won't get there perfectly so the purpose of this demonstration is we're going to show the meter working with the position of Hertz and percent duty and a lot of times uh, unless you're doing electronic stuff uh, that's not going to be a real useful position unless you work with variable frequency generators and things like that but for the electronic stuff we will use Hertz and we will use duty cycle so this is just a demonstration of how we do it and you see how it's hooked up as the voltage input between common and, vo and volts and the signal that I'm looking at right now to do the demo is the signal that I put to this rectifier this is called an H bridge it actually drives the motors and it has some transistors in there MOSFET drivers that when you turn them on chops up the DC wave the DC supplied by the battery so if it turns on that switch turns on 100% of the time that means you get full battery voltage if you just 50% you average out to 50% which is about 50% speed and that's why you chop it really fast so to get on with the demo I also have hooked up a multi comp USB scope and the purpose of that is to show graphically what the pulse is doing and also measure with a different instrument to prove that it's working correctly. So this is very interesting. I have the car jacked up and I could turn the motors off but it's more fun. I always have a power switch and a power switch just for the motors so they can be turned off and just run the electronics for troubleshooting. So here's the transmitter. So if I pull the trigger, it starts running. Okay, so I have it pulled back all the way. So right now it's running full speed. The meter says that it's doing an 83 percent duty cycle. And if I come over to the screen, just the yellow trace is what I've got the scope triggering on right now. And so there's a little display at the bottom here that says. So we're on channel 2 with the yellow one, 
The scope says we're at 82.5% duty cycle. And the pulse width is 412 microseconds, and the frequency is 2 kilohertz. That's hard to see. Okay, so the, the scope says 82.3%, I'm sorry, 82.5%. Is it really cool? And the meter says 82.4. So I'm going to have to run out the throttle real quick and just hit the button on the meter. So I can select uh, oh sorry wrong button I have to select Hertz okay so now I'm going to hit the throttle again okay. the Hertz is 1.997 kilohertz which is pretty much 2 kilohertz and I come over to the signal here the yellow one it still says repeatedly 82.5% duty cycle with a 2 kilohertz frequency. So I have two independent tools running and they are pretty much agreeing in pretty good shape. And we can see if I cut the throttle back you can kind of see the waveform change. So uh, throttle back about this far. You see that it's barely turning the wheels. And it's, it's still running at 2 kilohertz frequency. And the pulse width, if I can hold it, there's about 15%. And so, yeah, this is going to always be the same frequency. And if I hit the duty cycle and just get it run, barely running again. This is about 12.1. Fifteen. That's a fourteen. So I, actually, I'm pretty impressed. But now I have it at sixteen. Sixteen. That's pretty impressive. There's another demo. I've gone and connected the PC over Bluetooth to the meter over here, and it's hooked up to the equipment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it from here. I'll do some screenshots. But the interesting thing is, okay, I'm going to crank it up to like, let's make it some number I can hold in my hand. 75.8, 75.7. This pull is reading 74.5 and 2 kilohertz set even for frequency. So the meter is saying the frequency 1.997 kilohertz. Uh, for some reason, the display tool is showing 0.1997, even though the meter is showing 1.997. So kind of re let it reset itself. Oh, maybe there's a little bug in this hole. Anyway, the meter is going to be The PC tool for the meter is a little bit wrong with it. But it still looks cool. And comparatively with the scope, the numbers all look good. Continuing the measurements, I moved the probes from the output of the Pico that drives the H bridge. That's what we were looking at before for duty cycle. Now I've moved the probe 
and the meter over to the output of the trans of the receiver that's coming as an input to the Pico. And I thought it was very interesting. I had to move the point of the uh, the test point. It has a voltage divider on it so that it's below the three volts coming into the Pico. And whenever I tried to use the meter to analyze the points, it showed up on the scope, but the meter was reading zero, and I'll show show that a little bit later. And I moved them over to this the actual output, which is this wire here, coming to out of the uh, RC receiver. When I moved the uh, pin over to there, it had enough voltage for the meter to start reading all the numbers correctly. So, looking at the RC receiver itself, right there, the output frequency of the receiver is 62.42 hertz. I'm not expecting 50 hertz, but what's interesting enough, the meter says 62.42 and the scope instrument says 62.43. They actually agree, which is phenomenal. You see that it's not running, but the receiver has a pulse width on it. Already, that's a, it's calling a 9.22 duty cycle which makes sense whenever it's at the neutral position it's putting out a pulse width over here you can see it says 1.475 milliseconds that is the pulse width at zero position and when it goes to full throttle it should be two milliseconds and if it goes full throttle reverse it would be one millisecond so just for fun it won't go all the way to 2 because the software has a limit on it about to run full speed. So it's running 1.875 milliseconds wide, so that's pretty good. If I go backwards, it's 1.275. And the reason it doesn't go all the way to 1 is because I have a software limit programmed into the controller itself to only run half speed in reverse. Otherwise, it'll, people will drive it crazy. And so the duty cycles are showing up here. So everything is looking pretty cool as far as the metering goes. So I'm going to hit the button here on the duty cycle. It says 9.4 for the DVM. And the duty cycle of the scope says 9.2. That's pretty impressive. And then if I pull the trigger back and go full throttle, duty cycle says 11.72, meter says 12, that says 12, actually uh, that's pretty good, uh, I was uh, expected to see that, okay, there we can see the that is matching up pretty well. And I'll hit the meters 62.42 and the frequency shouldn't change. This is on the red uh, the red trace. And you see the RC stick control is still holding in there. So all in all, I am pretty impressed with those measurements. They turned out really well. And you can also see how you can use the, uh, the meter to troubleshoot these things and give you a reliable response, especially if you're not going to mess with the scope.